senior command is flying with one wing. The senior command needs help. They're in a crisis. They need help. The board knows that because the board has been working hard on this. None of you know it because you don't have a role to play. The, the senior command needs the help. And that is why the board unanimously made a decision to get them more help that they needed right now. So, you know, I know, I know you're all very wise, but uh, you don't know what you're talking about. That it's just as simple as that. Um, um, you know, and you say, uh, one of the counselors said, should do everything in her power. Well, you're, you're, you're destabilizing the oversight body for Ottawa police in the middle of the biggest crisis in this city's history. That's not doing everything to bring this to an end. That is being ridiculously political ridiculously political and you know that you're doing it because it's an opportunity to try and uh, deflect away from the mayor who uh, made a, in my estimation just a horrendous decision to negotiate with terrorists and to, to put 40 more trucks into the core like just mind-boggling and anyway I, I, I can't even go this incident has really brought this challenge around police governance to the surface since the mayor has a different vision of police governance in the city, I will be tendering my resignation forthwith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you very much, Councillor, and thank you for your service. Um, I mean, my name is, is to be unseated as the chair of this board for breach of conduct. I can tell you, I have not breached any conduct. I don't know who leaked anything but it wasn't me. And you can do all the investigations in the world. I did not breach conduct. Oh, so I should be taken off the board for breach of conduct, which I had no part in. But when Councillor Tierney leaked a legal mem memo on the Rito sinkhole, no consequences to the, no consequences, no co consequences to the Watson Club. Oh, and when Jan Harder was found in breach of our code of conduct more recently in terms of a planning matter and hiring um, someone that on the on her payroll that was also a consultant. No consequences. She had to step down, but that's it. I did not breach any code of conduct and I'm being asked, told I'm being replaced uh, for a breach of code of conduct. Anyway, it's just, it's just fascinating little aside. There you have it, Mayor. You just saw Ralston King uh, resign from the police board because of your actions and your club's actions here. You've been uh, writing articles in community newspapers about the uh, city's anti-racism strategy. And you've referenced Councillor King in there repeatedly, article after article. And now this last second intervention by you, which most members of council that you've systematically guided since the beginning of this term, we're not aware of. So really what you're doing here is blowing up the police board in order to insert your own people that'll be loyal to you like you've been doing all term on every other committee. Um, I, I wanna talk about the board. This board has worked effectively as a board for the last three years. And yes, we have been criticized. The board brought in the first black chief in our history, which we are very proud of, to change the way policing is done in the city of Ottawa, because frankly, it was way back in the 1950s. It was very much a half a century back. And we decided to bring policing into the next century. And we have made a lot of enemies during that. The police association who want a law and order cop at the top, and who want all the money city council will send their way are not happy with us. And the far left who think we should defund police and not have a police service at all, oh, they're not happy with us either. 
But you know what? This board was determined to bring about progressive change to policing in the city of Ottawa. We did it thoughtfully. We did it rationally. And we did it with the best interest of the community that we serve. That's what we have done. And I am proud of every single member of the Police Services Board, Daljit Nerman, Carol Ann Meehan, Rawson King, Sandy Smallwood, Beverly Johnson, I think I might have forgotten one. Uh, there's seven of us. Um, but they have done an outstanding job and they have worked so hard. And none of you know, none of you know the time and effort that it takes to to do the jobs that all of them do on this board. None of you know the time and effort that I have put into this. I put 30 to 40 hours a week just into the role of chairing the police services board. We're also the employer. We're the employer for 1,700 people in police service. It, we do the labor evaluations. We do all kinds of things as an employer that you know nothing of, but it is very time consuming job. And I committed to doing it. And I believe that I have done that job well. And I have worked hard and I can tell you for the last 20 days, you may not have seen the effort. You might think I haven't picked up the phone and called you often enough. But we have done a number of briefings. On the 26th of January, before those trucks even rolled into town, I, I set up a briefing for you for this council. And you might think I haven't answered some of your email. Believe me, I have 10,000 emails in my box. I've been doing my best. But it has been a huge huge thing. I have worked 20 days. I have not had a date off. I'm not complaining. I took on this role and I want this occupation to end and I have given it my heart and my soul with everything I have. I've worked 12 to 14 days, hours a day, every single day since this started. I've asked the questions. The board has asked the questions. The board has worked so hard. They have brought in the soldier and they've said, is there anything we haven't done? Like, we're really worried. Is there more we can do? We have pressed for resources. I've phoned multiple, multiple members of parliament and MPPs and everyone I could think of to get resources. We have worked to, to do the job. And yeah, I know, like I read Twitter and I know I haven't done enough. And I'm sure there's lots of blame to go around. But I can tell you the Solicitor General who oversees us, they, have, they told us in our briefing yesterday that this board has done an amazing job. And Councillor King, um, you're, you're a friend, you're a colleague, um, you do a lot of great work in your community, but you, um, you played a really important role on that board. You know it. You, the face of Ottawa has changed. And Ottawa has not changed. You have been the moral leader of an entire community. I would really ask that you reconsider. We we have a lot of a lot of things to heal. And although there is divisive votes tonight, I think we could 100% all vote for your for you uh, and your the work that you've done on the board. I am a proud member of council because of people like you. Because you have guts, you've come forward, you speak up your mind. And I want to extend that to the board. Diane and, and Carol Ann, the hours and hours of slugging that you've had, tough discussions, even before the budget process. And, you know, I don't know that we've landed perfectly, but I have to say that uh, the amount of hours of dedication uh, to our city, to the organization, I question none. And, you know, you worry about who we have chosen as an interim chief. Well, I can tell you that this person has an impeccable record. He has um, a background in policing that would be very useful to bolster the senior command. And you're going to say, oh, you didn't do a process. You did it too fast. We're in a crisis. We needed to act quickly. And the board recognized that. We put a protracted uh, process in place 
for that very reason, because we recognize we needed to move expeditiously to shore up this, to get this job done, to get these damn occupiers out of our city. That is our whole focus. And for all of you armchair critics to sit there that, you know, Councilor McKenney said that you haven't picked up the phone and called them. Well, I have. They will tell you, I have called them many times to see what I can do on the board to assist. And I have worked with the downtown councillors in an effort to make sure that they were getting what they needed. I did that. None of you did. So, you know, you want to criticize me? Go ahead and criticize me. Criticize me all day long. But we have worked in the best interest of this city. Uh, what is the plan for the weekend? What is the plan so that more people don't come back into this city? And that it doesn't cause the mayhem and chaos and harassment and violence that the last two weekends have caused. You don't actually care or we would not be having this conversation right now. Councillor King, I am sorry. I am sorry that you were dismissed. And Mayor Watson, I have lost all confidence in you as a mayor of the city of Ottawa. Thank you. Um, you know, um, for those of you who tell me that uh, you should have been told more about this, well, actually, no, you shouldn't. And when the mayor, I asked the mayor long ago if I could, Chief Soli and I could come to council and do briefings to council just to increase the education level of the police service. We take 10% of the budget. And members of council should have at least a knowledge of what's happening there. And when I wrote that letter um, to the mayor, I'll quote the mayor's own words to me when I asked just simply for the chief to brief council on an item of importance. Here's what Mayor Watson wrote back to me. The independent status of police services boards and limited role of municipal councils are hallmarks of the police governance model defined by the Police Services Act and its predecessor legislation. The Police Services Act makes it clear that there is no role for members of council to direct the OPSB or OPS on policing matters. Mayor Watson was right then, and that's still right today. And we have been working under this legislation. And I can tell you the advisor from um, uh, the Solicitor General's office sent me a message this afternoon when he heard about these political shenanigans that are uh, taking um, flight on the floor tonight. And he said, just wanted to let you know that the new act, which hasn't been proclaimed yet, would preclude council from doing this for exactly the reason we are seeing playing out on your council floor today. Because council is not to interfere in the working of the police board. And they're going to change that in the act to stop you from acting exactly as you are acting today. So I just thought that what might be interesting for your edification to know that you're sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. If you had wanted to have a role in the decisions of the police services board, you should have stood to put your name forward to do all the work and to go through all the seminars and to understand all of the information in this complex world of policing. You should have done all that. You haven't done any of it. You just sit back and decide to damn the people who have worked hard uh, in very tough circumstances uh, for doing their job. But what's happening tonight is truly disgusting. It demonstrates the lengths that you, as the mayor of the city, will go to protect your legacy. This is politics at its worst, and certainly the fish stings from the head on down. And for my council colleagues tonight who have sat back and done so little and just kept silent and who undoubtedly will dutifully follow the, the, their, their leader here tonight and vote against us to remove us from this post and vote out the chair and deans, chair deans and myself, then shame on you. I don't think that anyone's going to be fooled here tonight. And if they want heads to roll, um, 
due to the ballot box in October. And I think that this uh, mayor of the city of Ottawa should resign tonight because this city is in chaos and it doesn't need to be. And this is the last thing we need right now is this motion. So now I'm not upset anymore, I'm just angry again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Brockington, please. You know, I, we've been working hard. I, we, we didn't roll out the red carpet for a bunch of trucks to go on Wellington Street. And I didn't agree with it. And I know Mayor Watson was very mad at me when I said that he shouldn't be negotiation with negotiating with domestic terrorists. And I guess this is the price that I pay. But ultimately, you get to decide who sits on your police services board. I can tell you that many of you, I mean, will be lame duck in a few months. The people that are taking out the leaders and police You'll be lame duck, you'll be going on to your next jobs or your retirement, but you will have set the police services board and the police service in this city back years um, by playing politics tonight. So um, I don't think you should be very proud of yourselves. Uh, I think you actually, if you reflect on this, you really should be disgusted. And uh, um, I think, um, yeah, I just, you know, I want to say to Carol Ann, who I know is is very upset about this, Carol Ann has worked hard on this board, and Ralston is a very principled human being and has brought a lot to the board. And Sandy Smallwood has been an absolutely outstanding vice chair that has a knowledge second to none, and that is a huge loss. All of these people, it's a huge, huge loss. You don't know how many times we've relied on Sandy Smallwood and his incredible knowledge base to help us make very tough and complex decisions. And so your actions here today, you have destabilized the, the police service you have destabilized the police services board. You have played ugly, dirty politics in the middle of the biggest crisis in the city's history. And I hope every single one of you who votes with Mayor Watson on this today pays the price at, at the polls in October because you surely should. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Cavanaugh, please. Um, I am out here on the street, as you can see, where people live. We're never fucking leaving. Yeah, hi there. Where people live. And here we are Wednesday. Wednesday. In the evening. We couldn't even have this meeting early in the day. I have, I have not heard from anyone, whether it's the city, whether it's police, anyone, what is the plan to protect the people who live downtown, who are under siege, who continue to be under siege? And there is, I don't know who is, hi hey bud, I don't know who is counting trucks. I don't know who is counting uh, what is happening here, but I can tell you, I can tell you that the street is not cleared. Our residential area is it is not cleared. The smell of diesel fumes right now is actually sickening. And I want to know, and I want to know specifically, and I'm going to ask the city uh, later on, what is the plan for this weekend? What is the plan so that we don't get thousands of people back on our streets, adding to this mayhem and chaos. What are we doing? How are you stopping people from coming in on the weekend to add to what is already here? And so thank you for your question, Councillor McKinney. And um, again, I, I completely understand the frustration that you demonstrated that you're articulating on behalf of of your residents. Um, we are actively working, as I indicated, we're actively working and have developed a plan that is 
adequately and appropriately resourced to ultimately end this occupation. That is what you will see us roll out over the next coming days to successfully have everyone removed from our streets. But again, I'm not hearing what is the plan to ensure that this mayhem and chaos. I love you guys. I love you. I know you do. We're not leaving. What is the plan so that this mayhem and chaos is not added to on the weekend? Like, what are we doing? Are we blocking streets? What are we doing? Are we blocking uh, off ramps? We must be doing something because we cannot have another dangerous weekend in our downtown. So, Councillor McKenney, I can't speak to the specifics of the plan because it would jeopardize its operational success. But what I can tell you is there's a number of interventions that you will see that you have already seen over the last 24 hours and you will continue to see over the next day and coming days that will achieve exactly what you're asking for. And will that ensure that we don't get a surge of new sympathizers to this occupation, a legal occupation on the weekend. That is absolutely part of our planning and uh, rollout. Thank you, Mayor. I'm gonna have very similar questions for city staff uh, when um, we go to that portion because I have not so much as had a message from city staff we are tired we are fed up you can see what people are living under here it is not okay and now we're playing political games here today and i've had it i pleaded with people but now now people in the downtown are angry and they want action i'll have many more questions later thank you i was just I was just aghast this weekend that, you know, there's a bouncy castle and, and there's a hot tub. I, David, I wanted to go up there and poke that hot tub um, myself and let the water flow out of it and unplug that damn bouncy castle because it's just a symbol of the frustration that's gone on for 19 days in the capital. So 